So Zabbix 7.0 is finally released and it is time to review all of the new features that are available inside it and yeah, make your life easier in terms of understanding how those actually work. And I do already have a couple of videos about the new functionality of the 7.0. So if that is something you're looking for, just click subscribe button and go to the channel and look for all the all the recent videos. I'm sure you're going to find something for you. And uh, for the sake of this video for today, we're going to be talking about the new item, the web monitoring item, which is not exactly the same as uh, we are all used to in terms of web monitoring in the items. And the biggest difference is the previous one was basically the curl execution against the web page that allows you to retrieve the source code of the page, uh, all the content in, in terms of the code. And uh, you could check the HTTP code, you could also check for presence of some strings and uh, response time availability and uh, mostly that's it many things were not possible to monitor through the old item um, because of that limitation and the limitations were caused basically because it was running on a curl however the new item it is basically a selenium like monitoring within the zabbix so judging by just reading through the what's new page of the zabbix 7.0 you are able to capture the screenshots of the current website which is amazing so you can make sure that the website looks exactly how it should look and is available to your users. You can collect and visualize the website performance and availability metrics, extract and monitor any data from your web application, analyze the collected data, and of course also receive the alerts related to any discovered problems. And to make this video possible, I do have the Zabbix installation of the 7.0.0 stable release. And uh, this time I don't have it installed from the Docker containers. I did install through the packages, but there's literally no difference in that. And uh, I'm using Alma Linux 9. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. But basically everything should be exactly the same on all the other distributions. And to make my life easier to make these videos for you, I'm again, I'm using the blog post from the init max, which describes how you can install and use uh, the new item uh, browser, browser item, item browser, whatever. And uh, definitely check out link in the description, they do have a lot of uh, tutorials about his and not only about is Abix also about a Postgres that could be helpful for your database optimizations for the monitoring and uh, yeah it, it's great to share things uh, with a community because there are so many Zabbix users out there and basically preparing the environment so uh, keep in mind that uh, web monitoring has dependencies like the Google Chrome and the Selenium web driver so there are multiple ways how you can get it on your system but uh, one for a fact you need to get it on your system and this tutorial actually recommends to use the Podman so do the installation through the containers and uh, that is something I will be doing myself with the only difference I don't have a Podman I do have a Docker and there are basically interchangeable. So same applies and, and same will work for me. If you don't have an eater, then you can just follow through the documentation and uh, install the Podman, Podman Compose. If uh, you are stumbling on an issue that the Podman Compose RPM is not found on the system, keep in mind that this tutorial is written on a Rocky Linux 9. If you're running something else, it might be not there but the installation is still going to be straightforward so just do it a quick google on how to install like podman compose or docker compose on ubuntu debian or or whatever else so i already have a docker so i don't need that and uh, for the docker and and also for the podman we need a compose file which basically is a predefined list of uh, commands and end configuration that will allow us with just one click to run all the necessary containers that will be required for this uh, browser monitoring as a dependency. And uh, I already downloaded it. It's in my TMP. Here it is, uh, docker compose uh, .yaml. And as you can see, it contains all of the required stuff which you don't need to change anything and you don't need to write this on your own you just need to execute this command we just uh, will download the file that i just showed you and then we need to start it and uh, i actually already have it started here in the docker ps and uh, this is the result of the command uh, which one 
uh, this one, docker compose minus F, then the actual YAML file that you want to start and up minus D. It will take a couple of minutes because it's actually going to download uh, a lot of uh, containers. And uh, yeah, it's going to take a minute or two. And I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, be aware that uh, it requires more than two gigabytes of the RAM. So I did actually uh, had to stop my virtual machine previously and increase the RAM to make this video possible. So make sure that container is running to run, uh, run Podman PS, or in my case, it is a Docker PS. And we can see that everything is running, we can see uh, exposed ports and uh, Selenium server should now be available in the local host and the port 4444. Four, four, four. So it might not be the local host for you. Um, it's not for me because I'm using the virtual machine. Uh, so I can check it with the IP address of the virtual machine. And there we go. I have the Selenium dashboard, which is available just because I've just started these uh, containers. Um, then going back to the page. So you can also check Selenium directly, the web page once loaded, the Selenium grid page will appear. Uh, so all the good stuff. Next, the Zabbix server settings, we need to adjust our Zabbix server for this to work. And basically, there's just one thing that we need to do, we need to provide uh, the URL for the web driver, which is exactly the one that I've just opened here. So what we're going to do, open my CLI, I will zoom this a little bit in, uh, open the Zabbix server config file. And we need to search for the new parameter, uh, web driver URL. If you don't see this parameter in your config file, you're probably not using the Zabbix 7.0 and this uh, will not be available in the previous version. So uh, web driver URL, there we go, copy, paste, delete the comment and uh, URL is it's not the local host. Oh, no, right now it's going to be the local host. So here I used the uh, IP of the virtual machine. But uh, since the Zabbix server is running on the same uh, machine, where the Docker containers, so it's going to be the local host, um, back to CLI added, that's all we need. And right now it's a matter of running system CTL, restart, Zabbix server, this thing has not changed over the versions, you still need to restart your Zabbix server binary, whenever you made some uh, changes to the configuration file. Uh, back to the blog. So next enable browser parlors. Snap, I forgot there's more than one thing you also need to enable the parlors by default. Uh, there's by default, it's one. Um, do this by adequately setting the start uh, start browser polish directive, which for the purpose of our example is sufficient to leave at the value five. Um, let's check what's the default value. Um, browser, browser polars, one, right? It is yes, no, yes. So like this, I will set it to five. I'm not sure yet, like it, it will require to playing around to understand more like the capacity and, and, and the requirements. Uh, from previous experience, I believe for just a simple test, uh, the one polar should be sufficient. But whatever, let's set it up to the five. So again, we need to do the restart system CTL restart Zabbix server. Um, this is done. So next restart the Zabbix server done front end settings to quickly test the functionality. We have a sample sample template provided by the Zabbix, which you can find here. Let's see what is here. And here is uh, the link to the Zabbix Git uh, website by browser with all the requirements Zabbix version 7.0 or higher uh, Chrome driver, Selenium server, alpha six configuration, everything that's inside a template, you can go read through it. Uh, we're not going to do that in this video. So the only thing that we need to do then create a test host. Uh, let's call this uh, data collection hosts, uh, create host. Okay, let's not invent anything new, uh, test host and uh, host groups. Let's make it Linux servers, uh, templates, website by browser. I think that's it. Let's verify. Uh, website by browser host groups, uh, yeah, whatever for proper functionality, you must not forget to change the macro setting inside a template itself. The most important will, of course, be the target URL we want to monitor. As example, the website domain macro highlighted by the image below in the macros of the template, you can also find many other useful parameters such as the choice of the browser, check intervals or screen resolution. So let's actually save this. 
and this is done then open the configuration of the host and go to the macros inherited and host macros so let's look for what we need website domain uh, let's change to I don't know let's change to the www.zabbix.com let's monitor the website of the Zabbix um, I think that's it uh, website get data interval whatever that's fine navigation load max uh, HTTPS uh, website resolution should be fine so that is done and uh, let's go back to the blog uh, with this setting save the host and you can move to the data preview the speed of the loading of the current data depends on the set interval which is primarily controlled by the template macro fortunately you can use the execute now button so let's save us time uh, i will close this to make it easier uh, go to the items select everything and uh, click execute now which basically will avoid all the update intervals and just execute uh, the check right away um, I guess we can go back to the all hosts and 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 and, and monitoring hosts uh, test home dashboards and there we go uh, we don't still have a uh, values uh, these are coming in uh, let's wait for a little bit navigation size uh, navigation decoded body size encoded by body, body size transfer size and here we have something else and here is the screenshot here is the screenshot of the uh, zabbix.com right and uh, well it, it's not on the full size because of the resolution that we specified uh, I think it might be related that I have a 4k monitor and uh, I've actually made a screenshot of uh, 1080 I think I'm not sure um, let's how can we close this here okay um, let's read um, pum, 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 pum. 1080 90 20 okay get data the best overview of the collected data can be found directly uh, through the dashboard supplied by the Zabbix together with the template uh, monitoring after opening a ready-made dashboard and is displayed this dashboard contains a screenshot of our first run uh, and a lot of other useful performance metrics note that the screenshot also includes a legally required cookie notice like in this example it is for the initmax web page but it's not for the Zabbix web page so the removal of this warning can be found in the next chapter of this guide we'll show you there how to adapt this template to your specific requirements i will not do that um i'm can i no i cannot i'm, I'm i really wanted to see like the full uh full view of uh of the page so let's try to switch actually hosts uh uh, data collection hosts uh, test home macros inherited macros and change this to www.initmax.com uh, let's see if this will change anything go back to the items select everything uh, execute now again uh, monitoring uh, monitoring hosts uh, back to the dashboards and this is loading no data found uh, let's wait again for a while okay so here we have the screenshot and there's the second one with uh init max uh okay your kugi settings so i accept all and uh well yeah okay let's let's try to do that i'm <sighs> I'm a bit confused why this window looks like that. I don't like it. I don't know if that's a bug or something to do with the 4K resolution of my monitor. Uh, so template modification and the custom tests. Uh, when editing, we'll use the original Zabbix template, which is sufficient for the needs of our example. However, in the production, it's always better to have a template of its own for each specific check. And obviously, this is just the example how to uh, click on I accept the cookies on the initmax page. But uh, whatever website you're running, you can modify this up to your needs and uh, do something else so during the previous testing for example we didn't like the cookie warning uh, and 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 the easiest way to get rid of this bar is to click on I accept all button within the page and we can do that with the new web monitoring item so now we'll show you how to add this simple click uh, let's open our sample template website by browser I will do everything on host itself uh, where you can find an item with a tag uh, component raw so let's check in the data collection hosts items uh, data tag component raw so this one get data um, yeah I will not be able to change it on the host itself uh, I will need to change it on the template uh, so 
Uh, what do we need to do? Uh, get data in one of the previous steps, okay. Uh, the setting of this item also includes a script written in the JavaScript, so the one that I just opened here. And add this following section to the script. Accept cookies to hide this element. And what we're doing, find element to the expat that contains, I accept all, and uh, cannot find cookie button, and uh, click. That's it. So open the script of my raw item. Um, I think somewhere here, hopefully. Um, let's try it out. So apply, update. And uh, I think that's it. So let's go back. Uh, XPad is this piece of code search is okay. Here you can see the result script looks like it's yeah, so I'm not sure if it's actually going to work if we add it in the end. Um, I will actually better do it as uh, it is suggested. Uh, close this, go back to the template, website, delete this. I don't want to make mistakes. And it is after the get performance and after browser navigate URL. Uh, get performance browser navigate URL. So here, accept cookies to hide this element. Yeah, we can I think the tabs will be fine. Click apply, click update, uh, go to the data collection hosts, our test host to uh, the raw data. Click execute now and let's go back to the blog to make sure that we didn't forget anything. Save the script, click the apply button, update, you can observe the result. Again, don't forget that the new data will arrive with a delay depending on the preset interval to speed this up. You can click execute now. So should be fine. Let's uh, go back here. Uh, monitoring hosts, test home, dashboards, takes a while. So let's wait for a bit. And it was not working because we have an invalid object uh, in the script line 43. So let's see what we actually did. Uh, back to our raw, which one? This one, uh, template uh, script uh, line 43. Uh, okay, I think I understood the problem. Let me double check. So I've actually messed it up uh, with uh, copy pasting and right now I'm a bit lost. So I will show you how you can restore this. Uh, no, you don't need to delete it. Uh, it's, oh my God, you don't need to clone it as well. So go back to the configuration of the item, back to the configuration of the template. I don't need this because I made some mistake in the copy paste and I need the source code of this template that I again found on the Git. And uh, what we need, this. This is all the JavaScript. Think this far. So copy paste, paste it here. Uh, let's verify with the blog. In the end, return JSON stringify. Return JSON stringify. It's here. So that's now let's copy paste what we actually need. So accept the cookies to hide this element. Uh, we need to put it after the browser navigate URL. Once again, uh, browser navigate URL like this. Uh, so hopefully, let's try. So update, update, and I will actually. Uh, execute now and uh, I will test it out as well and this is tricky this is why I spent a couple of minutes like if you make actually a mistake in in the configuration the script itself you will not see uh, the error messages just because there is a pre-processing rule to check for the not supported value and if there is any error we are just discarding the value so if we're discarding there is no custom message or whatever it is just a blank item which I'm not sure if that's good. So click test, uh, get the value from the host, get the value and test. Um, keeping in mind that it takes so long, yeah, should be good result is truncated to due to its size. Okay, interesting. Monitoring hosts and test home dashboards. There we go, we have a new screenshot and right now we don't have uh, the new cookie. So that's about it. And I don't know, I, I think there's, 
some things that are not exactly how they should be. Uh, but that's basically it, how you configure the web monitoring item. Try it out with your website and let me know in the comments how it works and what do you think about it. So thank you for watching and see you later.